This video was recorded live on my Twitch channel. Check out all of my live streams down in the description below. Time for the GT National Championship. This five event championship is the jewel in the crown of the national racing scene. Demonstrate the power of perfection and open the door to the world stage. Nice. So we have five races here, another championship series. We have Silverstone International, which is quite an odd circuit. I don't think I've driven this layout too many times. Africa Hill Raceway, Bathurst, Monza with the Chicane, and the full Brands Hatch Grand Prix. So the typical opponent list is about N300 style cars if you're a GT Sport player like I am. And we're going to go ahead and buy one of those kind of cars. Let's go over to Mitsubishi. And let's get ourselves the... Da, 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 da. Where is it? There it is. The 2005 Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 9 GSR. And yellow solid is very solid indeed. We're getting it in PP color. Because yellow is my favorite color. No joke. It really is. Hence why I bought the aqua in yellow. It was kind of like a fuck it, just because I can kind of moment. But at the same time, it was like, oh, I like yellow. So... Maybe that paint chip could come in handy if I decide to buy a car that doesn't have yellow and it looks good in the Toyota Aqua's yellow. We'll see. But anyways, let's go ahead and get this championship started at Silverstone International. For our very last regular uh, championship race in the National A License section. Now, I know Silverstone National is used for a lot of club racing. I'm not sure about the international circuit. Okay, comfort stops are not going to cut it for this car. I'm not taking that risk. But yeah, we have a pretty stout lineup here. Mustang Boss 302. Char we have a Charger, a Challenger. We have a 3400S. A lot of good heavy hitter cars here in this field. I would love to own an Evo 8 or Evo 9 in real life. Look at this thing. This is one of the coolest looking cars ever. Like, no arg- you know, don't even at me. I'm not saying it's the best car ever, but it's definitely one of the coolest looking. One of the coolest cars. Although, in all honesty, I don't know if whether or not I like the Subaru Impreza more or this. Like, they're both pretty high up there for me, and they're pretty much the same thing to me. Like, they're on equal footing in terms of love and likability. Yeah, so definitely the AI cars are a bit faster than me. They're pulling away on the, on the longer straights. I'm trying to think about it right now, and I don't think I don't think the lack of acceleration on this car compared to the other cars we're facing against will be too much of an issue. We should be fine. Right behind the Tommy Kyra on his ass. Just not enough to get around him right now. But in the corner, we'll be fine. Oh, God, he's breaking way early. But yeah, we sure as shit will be better than both the Challenger and the Chart. Okay, bit of a corner cut. SR down, 0.5 second penalty. Um, we're definitely going to be better than the Challenger and the Charger at Mount Panorama. Like, yeah, they're going to kill us on the straightaway probably, but definitely in the corners. Oh my god, we're gonna, they're going to be like... What's that, what's that initial D saying? Not, not saying what was that line i think it was in 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 the funimation english dub i think it was like when i think takumi passed somebody and they were like you know with ease and they were just like um, one of the characters was like you, you know you made him look like grandma driving to sunday church or some shit that's gonna be us passing these two or the three american boys at panorama in the corners I kind of forgot about the Mustang. I was kind of focused on both the Challenger and the Charger because I think they're both much heavier cars anyways. They're quite neat cars, I might say.
Almost as if I'm hinting at the fact we're going to be using one of them. If you want to see, you have to stay tuned, of course. And how do you do that? Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell, do all the stuff, share the page, um, follow me on Twitch where I stream now. That's my shill. That's like my halfway shill through 36 videos of this so far. Complete. If you don't count the... This video was recorded live on my Twitch channel intro. Which is going on default, even though these so far six episodes and counting are not being recorded on Twitch. It's just the intro. Bit of a wide corner, but yeah. Actually, now that I think about it, I think I did drive Silverstone International outside of this game before in Forza 7. Again, Los Angeles Auto Show, just like I mentioned before in the um, Classic Muscle Car Series video. Um, Hyundai, whenever they did the Forza Challenges, I think they actually had one of their Forza Challenges at Silverstone International, and I think somebody had wrecked me, and then I wrecked them back to win. Because <laughs> they put me into the wall, and then I just caught them because they were really terrible with cornering. Oh, look, Buddy Rice, Indy 500 winners in fourth. Very cool. So, that is race number one down. Let's get our 20,000 credits. There's our pit crew working on the car. Post-race an um, anal you know, analyzation or whatever. And, uh, yeah. Let me go ahead and save the replay. And let's move on to race number two now. So here we go, race number two at Apricot Hill Raceway. I just noticed that um, TV in the background, the Jumbotron in the background with with the results screen. That's actually really cool. I guarantee you this is just all random mumbo jumbo and it's not, obviously it's not according to whatever's going on on track, but um, I'd be very curious to take a look at it in photo mode and see what the you know, Jumbotron actually has to say. There's probably some really cool like Easter egg there. Unless someone like Matt J already covered it and I'm just really late to the parties. I usually am with a lot of things. So we got a pretty similar race going on here. Although a more technical circuit I'd say than Silverstone International given that you know we just the international circuit is just like two straightaways with, or several straightaways with a couple chicanes essentially. Because you essentially bypass a lot of the goodies of the circuit, but hey, screw it. It's for club racing, I'm guessing, and that's what PD wanted us to use for this championship. Wow, the Lotus was really slow. Give that boy the honk. And the window, or the wind, the windshield wipe. Boss Mustang's still leading. That's not going to change at all. Come on, Lotus. You literally can corner better than the three cars ahead of you. I just, I'm thinking about it too. That's Franklin from GTA 5 in second. That Buffalo he drives is white, which is essentially a charger. So, yeah, that's Franklin confirmed. He's catching the Mustang. Mustang had a really shitty exit, so of course we're just going to take advantage and just zoom past by. Okay, they're a lot closer together than they were on Silverstone. I mean, we're going to win every race, but I'm 
kind of hoping that the points get mixed up anyways, just in case we somehow don't win a certain race and we can secure our championship and not rehab, not have to redo this. So, one more lap to go. God, just imagine FIA races around here, Africa Hill. And that's why I love playing older Gran Turismo games as well. Just coming back to the classic tracks, like, I love sport, but... And again, I'm not a wish lister for seven, but I just really want to see these classics back. Like, if we don't get them, then it's just kind of like, all right, fine, I suppose. But I'm just glad to see Trial Mountain back, even if it's reconfigured. It's still Trial Mountain, so, yeah. Four more corners to go. We already have a huge ass lead over the other cars. Again, technical circuit helps with shitty AI. Yeah, 11 seconds. Not even a contest at this point. Although I do wonder if the Mustang could get taken over by the Charger. I'd say probably not. If I had it on full map settings, then we would be able to see, but yeah, it doesn't really matter. The racing isn't really that exciting <laughs> anyways for P2, so whatever. All right, three stars gained, and let me go ahead and save the replay and move on to race number three. So with a bit of a sunset, here we go for race number three at Mount Panorama, and this one should be a complete walk in the park. Maybe there's a chance we might lose the race, given that those straightaways are really long here and those beefy American cars are going to be hauling ass, but... When we get to the top of the mountain, we'll, we're going to gain whatever we lose anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I'm going with Chase Cam on this one because I believe I used Cockpit for both um, the first two rounds. I don't remember about Silverstone because I. Obviously, with the jump cut, you can't see, but I actually took quite a bit of a break to grab a snack and get some water, use the bathroom and stuff, so I don't really remember, but I know for sure in the second race we used Cockpit. Man, this is a really good looking circuit in this game. But I can never disassociate the Super Cup finale with um, this particular track. Just that was... That race was awful. Which, it, it will probably be up on my YouTube channel by the time it, this is uploaded. If not, then probably after. I still got to upload the entirety of the 2020 uh, FIA GR Super GT Cup from my perspective. But, yeah. Um, I got to look. I, I, I got to see if, if it's up there. But, Jimmy, if you're watching this, the reason why North America didn't get a broadcast is because that race, that finale was a complete fucking nightmare. Danny Salas got killed by... He didn't get killed. He got he got a brake checked by the dude who won that race, and the dude who won the race used com like completely illegitimate tactics the entire time. And the dude is a pretty dirty driver, so yeah, poor Solace. He he dominated the entire season. We were all catching him, trying to catch him. I should say.
So yeah, easily getting close to the American cars here. At least we're gonna have a tow going down the straightaway, which is gonna be nice. I don't think they're gonna do much because they're gonna pull away easily with all the extra power they got. Yep, there goes everybody. The Lotus is by us. The XKR is probably gonna pass us by the end of the straight. Yeah, he's going for a move. He got on the brakes really early, so. That allowed us to keep the spot. Oh, the Lotus trying to get around the, the, the Charger, or the Challenger. Let's go. Oh, I tried to squeeze in into a gap that didn't really exist. I mean, it did, but it wasn't smart. Dude, look at the fucking the spree go. Hell yeah. Come on, let's go catch the boss Mustang now. Lotus is still in third. If he can catch the Mustang, that's going to um, shake the points up a lot. Oh, way early on the brakes. What a gentleman. He pretty much held the door open for us. And he was patient, too. Ice cream trucks here. I don't know. If, I don't know if the microphone can pick up the ice cream truck, but I hear the ice cream jingle in the background. I'd get one right now if you know, considering it's Saturday that I'm recording this. But considering we just had the Thanksgiving holiday, no. I ate like shit this whole week. For those who don't know, I I was on a weight loss regimen this whole year. I already lost all my weight that I gained over the years, but yeah. Even then, I can't get too carried away. <laughs> as good as a Sonic the Hedgehog popsicle that has like really fucked up gumball eyes. As good as that sounds right now, uh, no. I, I, I barely, I barely gave the Mustang a tap and he's like, all right, I'll slow down. The Lotus is right behind. The Lotus is going to get the Mustang, I reckon. Uh, he's lurking. He's not catching us. Maybe on the straightaway if we screw up um, the mountain section here, but I doubt it. Oh yeah, we're gone. The Lotus is backing off as well, so that sucks. Oh shit, I just realized too. The XKR is beating the Challenger. So the other British boy is actually beating one American boy. Oh fuck! I don't know if you saw the rear step. Um, I don't know if you saw the, the, the rear go up a little bit, but yeah, we started to nosedive a bit. Thankfully we didn't flip like we did at Matterhorn. But yeah, that would have really hit, that would have really sucked if um, we nosedived and we lost the race because of that.
Just one more corner to go. Yeah, easy win. Branch Hatch is going to be the next easy win, but I forget. I already forgot what race four is. And there we go. Halfway done with the championship for the national series or yeah, national championship. Nice to see another podium finisher instead of the other dodge, but yeah, that's um, that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and get our 20,000 credits, our three stars, and move on to race number four. So race number four, I forgot it was at Monza. This one could present some problems. Oh my god, the neighbors, the neighbors' dogs are going haywire right now for whatever reason. But um, this one could present us with some problems, maybe. But if the AI are really bad around the chicanes, then we might be okay. I'm gonna have to like mute and unmute because these dogs are going fucking nuts and I don't want the microphone to pick up just a bunch of barking noises. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure somebody with headphones will be able to hear the barking. I just turned on the mic real quick to see what the um, what the decibel would be like, and yeah, the little meter's moving around quite a bit. Under barking, haha! -ha. Instead of under breaking, get it? Because you know, under breaking is a racing term. So I say under barking because it's a you know dog thing. Speaking of under barking, that dog that ran on on the track at the Bahrain Grand Prix um, practice session yesterday. What a cutie she was. Yeah, at least the neighbor's dog stopped barking for now. But of course, we have the... Now we have the, um... landscaper here or whatever i don't know the term uh, the the person who mows the, the neighborhood lawns or cuts the bushes or whatever so i might have to be quiet for a bit which is no fun Okay, so we're catching, we're at least catching the um, P2. I'll have to pay to the times here and see if we're losing out on the boss thing at all. I feel like this race will be tricky because I feel like the chicanes won't really provide us a whole lot of opportunities to gain time. I mean, they could, but like, we're, the Z4 is getting past us. Like, the back markers are actually getting around us kind of easily. Until we reach this section. The car felt really light going through the sausage there, for some reason. So if we were at 9 seconds, when we cross the line, what's the gap now? I want to say like 7 or 8? Eight? 8 seconds, okay, yeah, we're not gaining shit through the first section, but this section, oh my god, everyone's together. I'll go ahead and cheese a bit. I don't mind a bit of cheese. Everyone was bunched up. Now we got a thick boy challenger ahead of us, Buddy Rice. Man, he was slow. Oh, sorry, Franklin. Didn't mean to do that. Yeah, Sector 2 alone, we just gained a tremendous amount of time. Two Lesmos help. A Scary probably does help too, but Parabolica... There's such a long straight heading there that I don't think we gained too much time heading through Parabolica.
So crossing the line, we have four seconds between us and the Mustang. The Lotus again flexing his guns here late in the championship hunt. He wants to go back. Oh, for fuck's sake. Back up, back up. Come on, come on. Reverse, reverse, reverse. Oh, fuck. I forgot in this game that you have to put the car in gear to go forward. Oh, fuck. That was dumb on my end. I should have just been more patient. I'm going to cheese the, the next chicane. Screw it. I don't care. I mean, I'm already going to win the championship by winning brands, but... Yeah, god damn it. <laughs> or perhaps we can still win? We gained a bunch of time. I gotta focus here. Okay, Lotus got stuck behind the Challenger, which is good for us, because the Challenger is being slow right now for some reason, because of rubber banding, I'm guessing. Okay, yeah, rubber banding kicked in big time on the final lap here. We just need a good exit. Our exit was pretty decent. Stay in the slip of the Mustang. He's going to be slow in Parabolica, and thankfully the other cars behind are not close enough. I want to say cheesing helped us, but in actuality, I think it was a more rubber banding than anything. Even if we didn't cheese the corner, I imagine the AIs would have been really slow out of the out of um, some of the corners. I just block like hell. Sorry, we're denying you your first win because I win the championship. Well, that would have been disastrous, but we cheesed the chat. We did it. We win. We win the championship. We can skip brands if we want to, but we need to do it for 100%. So back up to 10.6 million. In a couple segments, the, um, the amount of money we're going to get is going to be ridiculous. I'm just telling you right now. Some of you know why, but you'll, you'll see in about 1, 2... One, two, three. Once we get to part 40, you'll see there's like four different events we're going to do where we're going to get a bunch of money. Also, this part wasn't cut out because I'm obviously talking in the microphone here and I have something to say. But anyways, round number four. Round number four. Round number five. The finale of the GT National Championship. Brand Satch Indy, which will be a much shorter race than the other ones we just did. Because it's a shorter circuit. So here we go. Championship already won. But let's go out with a bang and get a clean sweep here. Also, it's sunset. Nice. Of course, the Vora is slow in T1. It's a little bit too heavy on the brakes. 3400S is almost going off track. Interesting. And leaves the door completely open. Thank you very much. Almost as if he knows that I want to just get through. Only seven seconds behind. There's virtually no gap between us and and the Mustang on the pole. We did lose just a tiny bit of time on that straightaway, but it was pretty much almost non-existent. The amount of time we lost. Just 
cut in. Okay, yeah. Passing the grass. Bit of an illegal overtake, and I crunched the challenger, but that's okay. Fuel was a bit bunched up. Want to see the damage, but there wasn't really any. But yeah, totally the easiest race easily. I said Bathurst was, but I think this might be the easiest. Given that the AI in this game do not like um, tracks with short straightaways. So, nothing else to do now other than just um, push and get a fast lap, I guess. Although, well, kind of hard to without sound. Okay, I'm kind of pushing a little too hard with the tires. Not being as smooth with the steering. Oh, kind of a careless mistake. I think the last time I actually drove Brands was, I want to say, it was almost a month ago. GT Sport, which today's date is uh, October, November 28th. So I remember it was uh, Daily A. It was, I think, the... Oh, I cannot remember what car it was. It was like N200 or N300. It was one of those... It was a Japanese car. Can I remember if it was on... It was not an RX-7. Maybe a Supra? No. Maybe a 240SX? I cannot remember. Point is, is that one make, racing with my with two of my buddies, uh, Joe Raider fan and the kid, BHR, and then PX7 Grove was, was also racing because we decided to do the race for fun. That was a fun little battle. Oh, I, for the life of me, cannot remember what car and uh, what car it was we were driving around Brands Hatch Indy or Brands Hatch GP. I mean, it's hurting my head just thinking about it now. Like I feel like it would have been an FCRX7, but I don't know. I'm gonna have to go back and watch his his stream. <laughs> Which shield time, by the way. Go check out PX7 Grove on uh, YouTube and Twitch. Go check out Cho Joe Raider Fan on YouTube. Cool guys. Fast. Joe likes Daily A and GT Sport, while PX7 Grove is uh, Mike Grove, who is uh, one of the top 16 superstars of GT Sport North America. And one of my toughest competitors and rivals in the GR Super Cup. So, yay. More shilling, because I have no chat. I can't talk to you guys live right now because no internet. Fuck you, Spectrum. Anyways, race number five down. Easiest win of all the five races, I'd say. The Challenger just had a miserable time. He finished well down the order. And there we go. We basically more or less gained whatever... We pretty much broke even with all the cars we bought and whatever we gained so far in today's recording session, which is pretty cool. Anyways, 125 points ahead of the Mustang and a further 230 ahead of the Charger. So those are championship gold trophy. And for winning the championship, we get 35,000 credits. Additional money in the bank, which is pretty nice. And of course, because we got in all the gold stars in the National A license section, it's prize card time. Which, hey, I haven't said that in a while. 
Nice. We get the Ari Amimiya FD3S RX7. This car is a blast to drive. I don't know if we're going to use it. I don't have it on my list. We might actually use it. Who knows? Let's get in it. That car is pure pog champ. So let's go check out our stats now and see where we're at progress wise. And we are 40% of the way down, only 10 more percent away from that magical halfway distance of Gran Turismo 6. So thank you so much for watching this episode of Let's Play GT6. Next time around, we are not done with the National A license section as we're going to take a look at the National A mission races.